no the statistics and all that stuff even if you don't remember that's okay but from here you need to remember and practice well oh, sir one question before we start uh, please uh, yeah. when we when we the, for the for the sample problem which i i had right Mm. So when I use the linear regression, uh, that mm. is by converting the categorical columns into numerical, mm. uh, when I ran that linear regression, uh, uh, I was getting uh, mm, train uh, R2 score uh, score as very, very low, that is 0 0.004. Oh. Uh, uh, but when I used the OLS earlier approach, uh, in that uh, case, uh, just one second. In that case, it was a lot better. Um, uh, that is R square score was uh, let's say a point one two four. I know it is equally bad, yeah, yeah, but it yeah. it's uh, with linear regression method it became worse. Okay. So, okay. Did you convert both uh, both of them to one hat encoding or label encoding? Uh, when in a linear regression, sir. Uh, in both cases, the same kind of conversion you did, or uh, one in different way, another different way. No, in case of OLS, so we don't need to uh, do anything Root. specific. Yeah. I just yeah. I just used a categorical column as a categorical. Mm. So it did uh, obviously one hot encoding. It did it uh, internally mm. in the OLS. Mm. Uh, in the linear regression, I just converted the whatever my categorical column. I can I convert it to the numerical. So, so cat dot codes you used mm. label encoding you did. Uh, okay. Mm, yeah, label encoding means I did it uh, basically in a different way. Somehow I can I converted that into numbers. Uh, numbers, yeah. E each category you get you assign some number and convert it, right? Mm, correct. So that is label encoding, right? Uh, yeah. Label encoding. <laughs> so the encoding is different. That's where it is giving different uh, kind of result. If you okay. convert that also, one hard sure. encoding, right? It will give you. Right? I'll show you how to convert it to one hard encoding. Get dummies is the method in uh, Pandas. You convert the column into categorical. Instead of saying categorical column dot cat dot codes, you do dot get dummies. Okay. Okay. We'll see that, sir. In okay. Basically, both algorithms are linear regression only. Okay, okay. Ordinarily squares, the cost function it uses is a squared, uh, squared error, I think. There is a cost function concept when we understand uh, uh, gradient descent, right? We will understand that. Okay. So, we took this data set and we understood the whole process of how to, you know, how to build a model, right? How to build a model in the sense. You need to do EDA and then do feature engineering and then keep all those results of your, you know, of your understanding aside so that you can use those results on the train set as well as test set and production also. Okay, that is very important point and you always do this on train set. You make conclusions, you save them and use those conclusions on test set and production also. That's how we do. We know when I say that this is what we do in many places, we do it and I'll, I'll reiterate and point out the same thing, you know, in coming classes. OK, so let us look at that. What what happened in a, at a high level? We took all these input variables. OK, and then this salary is output variable and there are different names for it. You know, we are calling this as multiple linear regression because we are using linear regression algorithm with many input variables. Okay, so you know these uh, names: input, independent, explanatory variable, output variable, dependent variable, target variable, and you know response variable. So many places uh, people will write in different ways. So you need to remember this terminology. Okay, and we passed all these x1, x2, and so on, xn, and y to the linear regression algorithm. It actually has got a hypothesis function like this. When I say hypothesis function, it will take each record and form this equation 
obviously we are going to convert these text into numbers right? convert into numbers and then pass it it will it's going to form these equations solve all of them at once and finds the thetas and that is machine learning that is deep learning that is basically ai it is actually trying to understand pattern in the data right so when you pass a new record it's going to make prediction that the existing record also it can make the prediction that's how the algorithm is working we know this this whole process also we know train test split we keep the tray test set aside because it is giving us an opportunity to test our code the right? three processing code and uh, it is creating a you know production uh, kind of environment you know in unseen data how the model is working whether the sampling happened properly or not these kinds of questions will be answered here. so there is most important thing here is underfitting and overfitting we saw that when model is not working well on train set we call that as underfitting when the model is working well on train set and not working well on test set we call that as overfitting you know why it happens and uh, what is the solution we have taken the simple example here this is from andrew ng snorts i don't know whether you know about this person this is a chinese guy this guy right he is a he is like you know guru right uh, when you when you go to youtube you will have uh, many videos of this guy you know he actually did courses on machine learning and deep learning theoretically they are very good but practical implementation um, you have to do it yourself so so i would say our course is like you know maybe 30 40% of it is from this guy's uh, content only okay this guy is the uh, is a main motivator I, i would say many people have got inspired by you know watching this the videos and you know he tried to make ai the you know people's thing okay? in a way technology technical people thing. so i i got this uh, picture from there or i drew i drew it you know this this basic picture is from that notes so what it is these red day, crosses are the data suppose that the red crosses are the data if you if we fit a straight line through that data or linear regression algorithm through that data it will be called as underfitted model if the data is complex the data pattern is complex in a simple algorithm it will underfit you no know, even when you pass the train set train set it is not going to give you no high accuracy let me try to draw and explain so when underfitting will happen when overfitting will happen and when we call the model as best fit model this is an example this is not always true right if data is forming a curve like this data is forming a curve like this which kind of model we should be building we should be fitting to make the model the best okay so this is one example don't take this as literally you no know, um, let me draw a little bit and explain so here right you now suppose that our uh, test set data is somewhere here generally it is not going to be like that but you know our tested data tested data is somewhere here okay if you if your data is like this right if your data is like this and you fitted a straight line right when you pass your train data where the prediction is going to be for this record where is the prediction is going to be for this record you can see my screen right just above uh, just that, yeah. on the line yes right here on the line for this here 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 and for this uh, for this here for this here this here for this here so you if you look at uh, 
if you look at the predictions and the actual values, will the error be high? Here. On the train set, will the error be high? There will be some error, right? On the train set, yes. there will be some error, right? Because the Y is predicted Y is here, actual Y is here, predicted Y is, you know, uh, somewhere here and actual Y is somewhere here. Predicted Y, actual Y is here, predicted Y is here, right? There is difference between Ys and Y caps, right? So there will be error. On the train set itself, it will be, it will give, you know, a lot of error. If you look at the test set, right, it will definitely give a lot of error. See this, the gap between, you know, the actual data point and whatever. So if data's pattern is complex and you choose a simple algorithm, model will underfit. Model will not even work on the train set. Test set, definitely it will not work. Train set, sometimes it may work on test set, but you know, when it is not working on train set well, you cannot accept that as the best model. Okay? And uh, you can make the model a bit complex. How can you make model a com complex model? By adding polynomial terms. Okay. How do you add polynomial terms? Let me show you that. So if your data set is like this, x0, x1, x2, right? We have a we have a class called as polynomial features in scikit-learn. If you pass your data to this polynomial features uh, class and specify the degree, right? I said two here. If you say two, it is going to add second degree polynomial. How is it going to add? It is going to add more terms, x1 square, x2 square and x1 automatically this polynomial features will have. if you specify 10 right all those 10th degree polynomials till 10th degree polynomial it'll add x1 square x2 x2 square x1 cube x2 cube x1 square x1 x2 x1 x2 square x1 x2 all those terms right till 10th degree it land okay so this is how you convert you add more features right polynomial degree features and then pass that polynomial degree features to the linear regression it is going to form a polynomial equation here it is forming a linear equation here it is forming a polynomial equation like that you actually do it okay so you add more features which are more complex in nature when i say complex in nature higher degree polynomials if you add the line the straight line will become a curve the straight line will become a curve and then you know the predictions will happen well on the train set and test set both so the prediction is there prediction is there prediction is there prediction. so prediction right so on the train set it is working well and test set also it is working well i took data you know very appropriately but maybe it may go a little down or up or whatever right so it is just for understanding both. you thought that the model is working well maybe you got 98 percent accuracy Right? And you thought, you know, I'll increase the higher polynomial degree even more. What happens? Right? So if you increase polynomial degree even more by adding these additional terms, right? The curve will become even, you know, even complex, you know, more right? even complex, and it will always it will try to touch the touch each point, whatever it matters. It tries to touch each point like that, and then go. And in this process, right, this may actually go down somewhere like that. In the in that process, what will happen? On the test set, it may not work well. You know, the prediction for this line is going to be here. The prediction for this is going to be here. The test set area, the predictions are screwed up. And the, you know, the train area, the predictions are coming good. So on train, you may get 99% accuracy, 1% increment. But on test set, right? It may go down to 70%. Maybe here you got 90, you know, 7.5 or 98% on, you know, test set also. But here it will go down on the test set. So visually we are trying to see. Yesterday we looked into the code and tried to understand overfitting, underfitting concept. When model is too simple and the data pattern is too complex, model will underfit. When model and data patterns complexities match, right? When you will do it? No, yesterday we looked into a learning curve. 
and in the learning curve we actually saw that uh, the data is not a problem algorithm was the problem right do you remember in the learning curve we understood that no data was not the problem no beyond 400 records the algorithm is unable to understand anything that means there is some no non linear or more complex pattern and the algorithm is unable to fit this is not the pattern there but you know maybe this kind of right that's what i am trying to this kind of pattern is there in data there is complex pattern we chose like you know a simple algorithm so if you add more polynomial terms right the model may work better that is one you know so so till yesterday we understood how to build a model by doing all the process you know eda feature engineering keeping those understandings on train set aside using them in test set right you know, making the test set ready to be predicted and all that we understood yesterday and we saw underfitting there now we are actually trying to understand more techniques to fix that under underfitting okay in real time also you build a model the model may underfit or overfit what you need to do you, you what, what should be done to make the model work best right that we need to know so we are trying to understand that process okay so if you if you if you increment you know if you keep on incrementing the polynomial terms or if you keep making the model more complex model will go into overfitting how will we know train set error is low underfitted train set test set errors are balanced model is you know good train set error is train uh, train set uh, is working good you know, train set is working good and test set is not working good that is underfitting so overfitting so you need to be careful where to stop your your uh, model complexity we should know so there are techniques there to you know to actually uh, stop or you know the, here also we'll use learning curve only we try to build a model with 1 degree polynomial 2 degree polynomial 3 degree polynomial 4 degree polynomial and try to do a plot between errors we we'll see that that is also a learning curve and if the error you know error on the train set and test set are kind of close to each other and what uh, so it is going to be like this if you try to draw the, that graph right let me show it if you try to draw a graph between the train set error and test set error train set error will go like down like that you know all the with the number of degrees increasing you know first degree polynomial second degree polynomial third degree polynomial fourth degree polynomial error on the you know y axis right on the train set the red line is train set error will go down okay i'll take another color violet color it is test set so test set error will also go down till some extent but at 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 one point in time right it start raising it starts raising so this is the best this is the best degree polynomial you need to choose second degree is the best degree polynomial so we use learning curve to understand or find out the best polynomial degree you know algorithm you know, the, the best algorithm that fits the model so we'll see these in coming classes even even you know in a clear way but the basic idea then the data is too complex and you to you chose a simple algorithm model will underfit we call this as high bias also these are all terminology that interviews they they used to they, they, they try to make you confused so underfitting is high bias just remember it okay we'll see uh, more more on it uh, in, in in next maybe 5 10 minutes so underfitting is high bias overfitting is high variance okay so when model is too complex high variance will happen or overfitting will happen model is too simple underfitting will happen model is you know just right it will work well on train set and test set both okay so this is a simple example any any questions here simple example it is visually trying to understand okay every algorithm we cannot visually see so how to fix it right that is another problem right so we got an underfitting underfitted model or overfitted model how to fix it theoretically we will understand here 
and in today you know today tomorrow day after tomorrow right we have tomorrow yeah. today tomorrow we'll see code examples also right you know there is theory we need to understand and remember there is practical implementation so i'll show that practical implementation today and tomorrow and monday also okay so this is very critical bro you know, this week classes are the most important classes the most important classes okay so try to practice and remember and uh, try to use the terminology because when you when you go out for an interview and you say like you know i have got uh, maybe one year two years three years of experience or i have done it there people will try to look at your way the way you, you are explaining if you use terminology a lot right the things like you know they you are you are really doing it okay so underfitting are high bias and overfitting are high variance okay the model not working well on train set is the underfit the model is too simple to learn the underlying structure of the data the model is too simple to learn underlying structure of the data right that's the problem underfitting okay how to fix underfitting problem select more powerful model that we have seen right select more powerful model uh with uh, more parameters right we we, we may have uh, taken less parameters and uh, the parameters are not having the uh, uh, desired pattern in them to understand you know uh, to relate it to the y variable okay take more parameters in features we need to add more columns here we need to add more columns here underfitting more columns overfitting more training data more rows maybe maybe columns also but rows is most you no know, mostly right more data we call it as so feeding better features uh, to learn you know the, to the learning algorithm feature engineering okay more columns right here are more features okay reducing the constraints on the model this point you will not understand now reducing the constraints are hyperparameter tuning when we understand gradient descent algorithm you will understand this okay this point i'll come you know, this point i'll come to later okay just th this point leave it now so select more powerful fee model or add more features okay that will actually fix underfitting problem powerful model or more features like it get yeah just in brief please explain me that uh, the feature in brief just uh, in brief, in brief. feature engineering is uh, very simple sir when we actually try to when we convert our data into numbers right simple example is that you are converting our uh, you know the designations into numbers that is one kind of feature engineering sometimes we try to extract uh, year from date or sometimes we multiply our you know um one example was there like uh, Uh, if, if you have, if, yeah, it will not come into uh, taking the appropriate features into the consideration for the building model. Not, not in that sense, right? No, that is feature selection. Appropriate features taking into consideration is called as feature selection. That will, that will come under the scope of model, right? A model will do it when you actually do the regularization, right? Model will automatically select the features. it will come into colors into numbers and uh, grades into numbers uh, whatever it may be uh, that, that can be converted into numbers is feature engineering simply right yeah, simply yeah. speaking that is feature engineering but if there is more complexity also sometimes you actually combine three four features and try to create one feature that actually yeah. that yeah. actually brings more you know closeness to the y variable and the x variable input variable <coughs> hope i you know answered your question i don't yeah. have a you know real like, good example real good example simple yeah. examples are you know these for the combining uh, some features into single feature uh, yeah. do we have a simple example do we have that's what you know when uh, um, uh, if we have to predict you know there was a one example like if we have to predict uh, the uh, Computer is uh, affected with virus or not? 
not only both of us, uh, our friends who are continuously following the classes can uh, come and uh, this, uh, participate in this uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when, when, when we have to predict whether a computer is you know, affected with virus or not, right, there will be slowness in the, you know, packets going into the computer and coming out of the computer. You know? There will be a peculiar pattern in the, you know, in the way the network behaves with the computer. So, we can, our, our processor, you know, our memory, right? So, we can actually take those metrics, you know, how the, processor is working, how the memory is working, how the network throughput is working. And then we can combine those three features and, you know, create one fee, one column, which actually gives you more clarity on how exactly the computer is behaving. Right? That you use it as input feature and try to predict whether the computer is affected with virus or not. The problem is a classification problem. Right? When you pass data, it will <coughs> it will say that whether computer is uh, um, affected with virus or not. The prediction is going to be affected with virus or not, yes or no. But you know, the the input, right? You actually took, took all those all those different fields, all those different numbers and combined them and passed as an input, one, in, one input and one output kind of thing. That is, you know, math, human, as a human, we know some, some, we have some knowledge, right? We actually apply that knowledge on data and convert data, engineer the data in such a way that it will actually have more stronger relationship with the Y so that the equation generation becomes easy for the algorithm. That it? Rule based uh, data conversion, rule based uh, imputation, these are all feature engineering. Feature engineering things. Sometimes you have nulls in the column and you can actually take mean, median, mode, uh, replace them, that's the dumb way. But you have, you know that uh, three features are affecting this particular feature. You know, using those three, four features, you can actually derive the values in here. So you generate an equation or you write some code, which actually works on this total data and tries to impute the values there. Okay. okay good. So that is, that is like, you know, feature selection and feature engineering. Feature selection means uh, best features. And feature engineering means trying to find out new find out new features or try to convert existing features or impute values or all that. Okay. So feeding better features means maybe there are other features which are not used so far in the model. You you need to consider them and add them into the data set. That actually reduces underfitting. Basically, underfitting happens because there is no strong relationship between the input and output. Or there is a strong relationship, but it is it is a it is kind of a non-linear pattern, and we are trying to use a linear algorithm or a simple algorithm. We are trying to use two problems. Okay, so underfitting can be fixed by doing these three, but third one we'll see later. Right? The, the, you know, powerful model are more features. You need to remember powerful model are more features. Powerful model are more features to fix the underfitting or fitting. Simplify the model. If you look at this, what happened? When we used one, you know, one first degree polynomial, it was kind of, uh, you know, the model is not very simple and not able to understand. Now, the second model is kind of, we incremented the polynomial and uh, the model became a little complex and it, it is kind of working fine. We thought it will work even better and we added more. It actually screwed up. It actually not working well on the test set. It is working well on the train set, right? So, if you can avoid, right? If, if, somehow, if you can eliminate x cube and x to the power of four terms, the model will come down and work well. Do you agree with my statement? On the third, you know, on the third equation, right, suppose that you are actually started with single, sim, simple linear regression. You did second degree polynomial, third degree polynomial, fourth degree polynomial. You are actually going forward and you found that at one point in time, this is actually overfitted. What you should do? You should actually reduce, you know, reduce the number of polynomials here. If I eliminate x cube and x4, x to the power of 4, these two terms, right? Will the model work? If we have a mechanism to 
eliminate these two dynamically will the model yes. work right yes. it will work right that is called as regularization there are there are techniques you know in uh, machine learning which actually when you actually train the model and apply regularization right the equation will come like you know 5 plus 10x1 plus 20x2 or maybe you know 15 or maybe you know maybe 8x2 8x2 plus 0.005x3 x cube right or maybe x square sorry 8x square and 0.005x cube plus 0.23x to the power 4 some numbers i took right these numbers are actually close to zero but they are not zero and this when you apply regularization technique the model will come to a stage automatically the coefficients will be assigned in such a way that the model will come to this stage it will be you know dragged backward to fit the model or what what this is called as reducing the complexity by applying regularization we will we'll know how regularization works and all that content all the topics right i'll cover it okay in uh, in uh, coming classes did you get this point did you get this point can i move yes, on all right yes. so yes sir the basic point is algorithm is finding you these coefficients right that you should remember always algorithm is finding these coefficients so when when you build a model and apply regularization right it will find coefficients in such a way that unnecessary features are are being assigned with you know a coefficient which is close to zero this is called as regularization so you need to reduce the complexity of the model to fix the overfitting the model is trying to understand the train set more and forgetting generalization so we, we actually need to apply regularization so we see that you know how it works and all that we'll see the same regularization you know reducing constraints i said right here here i said reducing complexity i said simplifying model or reducing complexity is one thing reducing constraints is another thing so to these two terms may be a bit confusing now we will make them very clear reducing constraints will actually increase the coefficient reducing constraint will make the coefficient big increasing constraint will make the coefficient small when we understand regularization how it works you will understand now it is like uh, I, I we have a bike when you raise the accelerator bike goes fast when you you know decrease the you know the, the, turn it downward the bike will go slow that's the point you need to understand now how it works you know when you raise it which which wire it is pulling and how the you know petrol is going into the engine and all that stuff we'll understand in future okay so when you increase the constraint what is that constraint there is a number there is a hyperparameter in the equation we try to increase that equation number which actually reduces these coefficients which makes the overfitted model underfitted or overfitted model best fitted okay <clears throat> when you decrease that number right when you decrease that number these numbers will become big and model will move towards overfitting so you can actually play with the algorithm you can actually play with the algorithm using regularization where you can actually make the model underfitted or overfitted or best fit okay so we'll see this concept later this one and this one are related to regularization we'll see them later but still i am explaining because you know you will have some question in your mind when you have a question right when that gets answered it will fix well into the mind so that's the you know thing i so gather more training data so yesterday we were actually trying to see whether the data is the problem or the you know the algorithm is the problem when data number of records are low also overfitting will happen right this is what the example i said when you are in your hometown you roamed around with your friends only four friends and you came to city and you have 100 friends now and you are unable to adjust there right less data you got trained and when you are exposed to more data you are unable to adjust that is overfitting 
in hometown you are good because the four four people are very good that's where you are you are able to you know exist well there but when you came to city you are having problem that is because your actual mind patterns are being you know exposed here another example you are a manager who handled maybe 200 people now and you are able to you know more more data was on which your mind is trained now if you have to if I, if i have to increase the team it will it will work but if you are you, you managed only four five people before and we have to make it 200 people we don't know right if the training happened well the patterns of the people are simple here and there are same then it will work if it is not right it will not work the sampling did not happen there properly got it so gathering more data will fix the overfitting problem so reducing noise also fixes the overfitting so let me try to explain this concept here gathering more data point is clear right gathering more data point is clear yes okay so reducing noise what is noise like it here yeah uh, already what i had the data that's it i can't add data or any synthetic data or i can't uh, yes sir get the data right yes sir suppose suppose uh, how to create the model from the existing data model how i can get more data actually the data was given by you or by some other organization yeah. the data sales data suppose we consider the sales data how we can add the sales data of the existing sales data and sales data that's it already so, in the from the data warehouse or in the from the excel sheets or some whatever it may be that that's only i can't get some more data yes how sir. i how i can add the data that one yes sir see in that case right we should change the algorithm and try to see if some other algorithm works best if no algorithm works right we can tell the client that you know this is what we can do right? <laughs> in many cases right it will not the it will not the problem it it, it will not happen you know i'll take one example we are working for ntpc you know that right so we actually have tried three cameras so far and uh, number plate uh, you know was not clearly visible there because you know cameras will have um, what you call it as resolution is one thing and the shutter speed is another thing if the shutter speed is too high we will be able to capture you know vehicles which are moving very fast if shutter speed is low we cannot capture you know the vehicles which are moving very fast so we should have both resolution and shutter speed both should be high to use it in a speed detection you know use case and we tried three cameras and the companies were actually saying that they work with uh, speed detection but out of those three right one was able to find out car numbers very well the picture is good we will we'll be able to extract the data well right so we'll be able to extract the number well but bike number we are unable to you know royal shield camera bike numbers we are unable to extract them in these three cases right three cameras we changed three times we had to capture the data right we need to we actually have to record the videos then you know take the frames frames in the sense pictures from it and then manually label it you will see what is labeling and what is bounding boxes and all that in deep learning class so we did that whole work rework 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 right so when we were explaining the client right they were actually accommodating with new cameras if client says no camera that's the end of the project i would say yes okay so client was very patient and they were actually you know very strong in doing the project you know they wanted to get it done so that that kind of a you know dedication is there with the client right we can work with it and we can collect more data if not right it will be underfitted only the model will be underfitted and uh, maybe 80% of the times we will be able to find out the number plates and rest you know manually they need to struggle even the photos will not come properly because if proto comes properly if a human being can find we the ai algorithm can definitely find it because we will train it if we can look at the photo and identify the number plate number we will actually crop it and you know give the target variable give the target variable and then you know we can train the model and make it best so data collection 
is an is an, a very important process data collection and data labeling is a very important process so it you know if everything is fine with the images and videos we would have finished the project in 10 days but that is not going to be the case for ai projects we are we are already struggling with uh, with the cameras and the images and all that for the last 3 months now i i would say in a month or so in a maybe 15 months 15 days or so we'll be able to deliver it but after delivering it also we may have to train it for maybe two more months so that's where six months project time you know it takes okay in resume some sometimes some people will put a uh, put a description there it may look like you know it is already there right why why these guys took this much time because of you know, the data problems data collection problems and all that labeling problems because we have these interns and all those all those people we are able to label the data well but if we don't have interns right only the developers will not be able to do it so these are all the problems with uh, you know in fixing the models uh, are making the model the best okay i hope i answered the question okay so the next thing is reducing noise will actually make the model uh model uh, best fit okay reducing noise so what is noise so unwanted data is there are you know there are some data points outliers are there there are some data points which are kind of you know outliers so noise may create underfitted model also sometimes okay see here if you have two data points somewhere there and rest of the data is here rest of the data is like this when you try to fit as you know a simple simple linear regression model where will it go will it go like this or will it go like that snuff model or red model which one which one will be the model that works snuff snuff one right the the algorithm always tries to go with the average right the coefficients average and if you try to solve two equations two equations two equations two equations individual equations and then take average right average of the coefficients it will go right it is a layman's layman's approach okay so suppose that this is train set this is your train set so this is your test set this is your train set that time how will it go red line only right this is train set this is test set okay so in that case right you will get huge error on the test test set you will you know the model will work well on the train set so because of noise some of the data points went into some of the noise points went into test set you are not getting good good accuracy there got it so with noise right the model may go underfitting or may go overfitting both can be possible if your sampling is not done properly it may go with overfitting if your sampling is done properly it may go with underfitting got it getting it any questions there yes so that is like you know that is the theoretical understanding or fitting under fitting and how to fix it okay i think i took more time than what is needed but that's fine so bias and variance okay this sir, part one second, one second yeah, sir please. so regarding that uh, noise reduction so is there any other, any built in mechanisms to remove the those too much varying things or uh, outliers etc generally uh, right in the eda process we will find them out you no know, generally when you do eda you will be looking at distributions of uh, the data right so the columns distributions you will see that actually gives you right the normal distribution or maybe scattered throughout right look at different columns distributions okay. you will get a high level view then fix a linear regression model and then try to do a residual versus fitted plot that will actually show some outliers there right so
so by using these techniques right you can get a get a high level picture our interquartile range and distribution plots these will give you clues on outliers yeah in in such case should we remove the outliers may not be we should look at to look into the data and see why that problem is happening is that really in the business or is it because of some uh, some you know data entry problem or you know some device got corrupted and trying to dump data wrong data into the erroneous data into the database so if it is erroneous data you need to remove clean it if it is a real business case right you may have to take you no know, separate the data and build two models okay right when data comes in you need to see which category it belongs to and then pass it to the appropriate model and make the prediction and give the output okay okay so outliers are on, are always not wrong you know erroneous data outlier means it can be erroneous it can be business pattern also that example i took right banjara hills jubi hills house prices and rest of the city house prices right they are not outliers when you put it the, put it into graphs and charts right it looks like outlier but business if you know business right it is real thing okay any any other questions good so shrinivas vedant from gar i have to talk to you uh, after the class i will call you sir there is an opportunity i just wanted to discuss with you sure and sure welcome and i i i am telling this because you may leave early so okay so bias this part of the generalization error is due to wrong assumptions okay you know such as uh, assuming the data is linear when it is quadratic right data is too complex or data is complex like this and we assumed that you know data may be simple and try to use a simple algorithm because of that bias happens you now high bias means our assumption is too wrong data is too complex and we are assuming it is too simple right the data and uh, the algorithm both are on, on the two different ends variance this part is due to excessive sensitivity to small variations in trained data right a model with many degrees of freedom is uh, you know is likely to have high high variance okay so variance will happen small sensitivity right you know sometimes what happens is if your data set is small right if your data set is too small you built a model it is working now you added you know maybe 10 records or remove 10 records the model behavior will change right that should not happen you know when we are building models and we are trying to move it move them into production we should make sure that you know the model is not uh, you know uh, is, is a Uh, not too sensitive to the data that's where unseen data will help you the train test split will help you make sure that the model is not too, too sensitive to you know minor changes okay so this is why this is where i am saying i am telling you you know statisticians should be the testers for the ai models right you build a model with whatever data you got and then you you do random sampling and all that and you actually if you, you know built a model but will that sustain or will that work well in the production or you know how the data patterns may change in future a statistician should actually assess and then see how it's working and you know may actually create plans or should actually create plans for future on how to modify the model or how to retrain the model when to retrain the model these kinds of things strategies should be designed by the testers in ai and uh, The, the the best people are the statisticians only because there will be different kinds of patterns in the data and the the sampling techniques are there and those things we may not know got it so tester should be the statistician but uh, uh, maybe from 2015 till 19 i don't know this year uh, most of the companies were taking statisticians as they 
lead data scientist. That's not the right thing in my view. Technical person who knows statistics should be the lead data scientist or AI, AI engineer. The data scientist itself is a confusing word. They actually try to put more stress on statistics, but the work is going to be in AI, the machine learning, deep learning algorithms. So I think you know the industry should change the name also. Rather than data scientist, we should, should they, they should be calling it as AI expert or you know something like that. Okay. So irreducible error. This part is due to noise in the data. Whatever you do, the model will not work because of the noise. Until and unless you clean up the noise or you know you fix the problems with the noise. Fix the data source, right? Such answers, you know, uh, delete uh, outliers, you know, these kinds of things. So until and unless you fix the data, this error will not reduce. This is called an irre irreducible error. Okay. So because of irreducible, irreducible error, most of the times overfitting will happen, but underfitting will may also happen if the sampling is not right. Assuming that sampling is right, overfitting is happening. I, I said here. Okay. So increase uh, a model's complexity will typically increase its variance, right? There is a concept called as bias variance trade-off. When you try to fix overfitting, underfitting may happen. When you try to fix underfitting, or overfitting may happen. This is the example, right? You, you know, when you fitted a straight line, it is underfitted. And we are trying to fix the problem by adding polynomial term and, uh, you know, it actually, you know, we kept on adding. Don't think that we stopped here with the second degree polynomial. We kept on adding the new polynomial terms and it, it, it ended up in a high, high variance or overfitted. Scenario. So we are we were trying to reduce our fix underfitting. It is going into overfitting, and we were trying to fix overfitting. It is coming back to underfitting. How do you fix overfitting? By eliminating the polynomial terms. First you took out this one. First second you took out this one. This one, and it went into an underfitted model. So we need to balance the model, right? So when you this is called as bias variance trade-off. In an algorithm, when you are trying to fix underfitting. Overfitting may happen when you are trying to fix overfitting. Underfitting may happen. This is called as bias variance. One increases, the other decreases. Okay, concept is simple, but you know when you try to explain or you know try to write it as a definition, right, it becomes complex. Okay, so increase the model's complexity. Increasing model's complexity typically increases the variance or reduces the bias. Right? Now I always get confused. Right, you remember high bias as underfitting, high variance as overfitting. Only one term you remember. The other term, you just think and talk. Okay? So it's a confusing concept. Underfitting, overfitting, we understood, right? Model is not working well on the train set itself, underfitting. Model working on train set, not working well on test set is overfitting. You just map them with, you know, high bias, high variance. Okay, you know here I'm using reduced bias and all that. Don't don't go into that. You may get confused. Conversely, reducing model's complexity will increase bias, or you know, it will actually make the model underfitted. You now, therefore, it is called as trade-off bias. Where one increases, the other decreases. Other increases, the you know the this one decreases. What is bias variance trade-off? Is an important question in interviews. Conceptually, right, you know, for your practical thing, underfitting, overfitting, high bias, high variance is very important, but knowing this, remembering these things is also important for interview purposes. Any questions on this theory? Okay, we are good. So let us jump in and try to practically see how actually we can fix it. So before we go into polynomial regression, so here in this model, right, we did not get good accuracy. And I see that there is some nonlinear you know, pattern here. Now here there is some nonlinear pattern. Maybe second degree polynomial will actually do a parabolic curve like this. And most of this data is covered. Or the predictions are going to be close to the <coughs> close to the y value and error may reduce. That's a, that's a, one of the hope I had got when I looked into residuals versus fitted plot. 
right? So we need to do polynomial regression on this model. So let us try to understand what is polynomial regression. Okay. So as I showed you this uh, diagram, you take your data, you pass it to the polynomial features class by specifying the degree. It will actually create the additional terms which are needed to generate that polynomial equation. This is linear equation. This is polynomial equation, right? So you are passing x0, x1, x2. Right? It is actually linear regression algorithm is forming a linear equation here, right? When I'm saying linear equation, all the data is going to be formed as a linear equation and you pass your input data and you get the prediction. When you pass these polynomial terms, right? So the, the same linear regression algorithm will form a polynomial equation and you get the prediction. So when you pass the data to polynomial features, what happens internally? It actually generates n plus d factorial by n factorial into d factorial number of features. See, I passed three features here. Right, are two features, I would say, right? Uh, two two features. X zero is a you know bias term we call it as. You know it will be one for every record. You know this is called as a bias term. If you want to have the theta zero term in your equation, you should definitely be passing x zero as one. Let me try to show you this. So if you pass x zero as one here, right? One here, what happens is if you look at this equation, theta 0 into x0 plus theta 1 into x1 plus theta 2 into x2. This x0 is 1, so that's where we are showing it as theta 0. That's it. Okay. So if you want, a, you know, the intercept should, should to be added, it should be added. You should definitely specify x0. This is called as bias term. But this term you need to remember because. In deep learning, we'll use it a lot. OK, this is called as bias term. So these are the features. Actual features are x1 and x2. So if I pass that to polynomial features, what happens? It is going to create this many number of features. n plus d factor. What is n? Number of features. In our machine learning course, right? we always say features with n rows with m m by n matrix okay rows with m columns with n okay so there are two features 2 plus what is the degree 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 2 factorial how much it is 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 2 factorial it can be written as 3 into 4. 4 factorial is what? 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. I think you remember, but I know I'm out of my 2 into 1 into 2 into 1. Right? This 2 into 1, 2 into 1 will go. This 2 will, you know, 2 and 6 features you get. See this here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 features we have got. Right? If you put uh, 3 here, it is going to be 2 plus 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 3 factorial. So it's going to be 5, right? 5 into 4 into 3 factorial divided by 2 factorial into 3 factorial. The 3 factorial, 3 factorial will go 2, right? It's going to create 10 features. If you raise this data set into third degree polynomial, it is going to create 10 features. What are those features? You know, again, it may create x1 cubed, x2 cubed, you know, x1, 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 x2 square. You no, know, x2, x1 square, right? x1, x2 cube, right? All like that, you know, it's going to create all the. These are the interaction terms. When you use polynomial features class, automatically the interaction terms are created. Even if there is some kind of uh, uh, serial correlation, by doing polynomial regression, it will get fixed. Do you remember that serial correlation or autocorrelation concept in linear regression assumptions? Do you remember? Yes. Right? So this is polynomial regression. So I am actually trying to see if the model, you know, the model is definitely the model is not working. We have seen that the 
accuracy is very low that means under repeated model and when we looked into the learning curve we understood algorithm is the problem so i am trying to make the model complex by doing a polynomial regression before i do that right i wanted to see what is polynomial regression so we looked into that and here i took one more example okay i'll talk about these tomorrow but i have took one simple example see i have taken a simple polynomial you know data set what is polynomial data set see this is this a polynomial data set non linear data set is this a linear or non linear non linear non linear right non linear right so i have generated it how can we generate i took a polynomial equation i generated i, I randomly generated mm -hmm. input and substituted and then you know generated these and saved it i we have you have this in the data but you know you can also do that so i did some some you know i converted them to two dimensional arrays and then tried to plot it and i have you know seen that the data is non linear see this i have taken polynomial features class and then passing the degree to and there is a see somebody asked can i eliminate the you no know, intercept right include bias if you say true it is going to add the bias term the theta zero if you say false right it is not going to add it so it's going to be n plus d factorial by n plus n factorial d factorial minus 1 it's going to be one feature is not going to be there right if you say include bias is equal to false what is bias the bias term is the x zero term right this x zero term is the bias term do you want to eliminate or have it that's the uh, attribute here okay now this polynomial features has got a, a method called as fit transform we have seen fit so far we haven't seen transform right generally in you know in linear regression or ols algorithm what fit is doing generating the equation. creating the formula yeah it is actually generating equations of each row then solving all the equations at once and then creating the formula finding out the coefficients right in polynomial features what is fit what is transform in linear regression the fit is forming equations and solving all of them and finding the coefficients because it's an algorithm there we are not saying transform because it's a prediction thing right you 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 use that equation to make predictions you know those are called as uh, predictors in in scikit learn there are two kinds of classes one is predictors another is transformers so these are called as transformers you know the polynomial features will have uh, standard scaling you know other classes will see those are called as transformers and the linear regression svm the algorithms are called as predictors okay in predictors you do fit and then you call predict but in transformers right you do fit individually you can do fit individually you can do transform individually or you can do fit transform together like this also when you say fit what is fit here what is transform here can can somebody guess i did not explain but you know can somebody guess in polynomial features what is fit and what is transform what is fit method is doing what is transform method is doing can you guess by looking at this diagram transform first the form adds the interaction terms mm. and then fit will actually generate the equations and solve them and create a uh, final mm -hmm. model equation that's a good guess that's a good guess but you know anybody else no i think transform is this kind of log transformation it's a square yeah way. yeah good 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 right fit is actually going to see right how many features it's going to get right and then you know it understands like you know how, what it need to generate okay and then transform will actually create the data set right add these you know take the data and apply that x1 square x2 square x1 x2 for the first row replaces you know add those columns add those columns add the transformation right log transformation right we understood we have to do log transformation and then did it right like that in fit it will understand how many features it will get and all that and it will actually prepare the equation right prepare the equation in the sense prepare the columns right 
x1 x2 x3 is there so it is going to add x1 square x2 square x x1 x2 columns into the data frame and transform will actually calculate the values and substitute this point is very important we will have fit transform in many places and one more point is on trains that we do fit transform and test set we do only transform we don't do fit that concept will i'll explain in in, in tomorrow class tomorrow's class on train set we do fit transform because we need to understand what is what, what we need to do on train set okay on the test set right we no need to understand anything we just need to transform all the understanding is made on train set yesterday also i said the same point right all the understanding is made on the train set only transformation happens on the test set on the train set understanding and transformation both happens okay so fit transform will actually identify how many features and actually add those columns to the data set and then transform will actually replace the values okay when you do fit transform i have got three columns here right uh it is x0 the bias term and x1 is the actual whatever you know whatever data set and x1 square is the added column like this three columns we have got okay now i built a linear regression algorithm when i built a linear regression algorithm the equation is going to be polynomial right so when i did you know the polynomial the line came like that this is the red dots are the predicted values are the equation it generated so now the model is working okay so i did more more here i think uh, i may not be able to show you the polynomial regression model on the data set today but we'll just understand here okay so so far clear any any questions uh, yes sir on the test set i do i <clears throat> it's not clear to me why we, why do we need to do transformation again on the test set can you because you know when you look, when you look at this uh, process this approach right of splitting data what we did what we did initially this is raw data right raw data we split it and kept this part aside when you kept this part aside what happens the uh, categorical values have got categorical values only and uh, the features are only xn right maybe 10 features are there only 10 will be there but when you took the train set you actually converted all the train set data into numbers right the categorical data into numbers and then you applied polynomial features also in this feature engineering polynomial features conversion is also called as feature engineering we are adding new features from the existing features right we did some feature engineering also with that right what happened this 10 feature data became maybe 20 feature data by here by 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 the time it reached here and we trained model using 20 features that means the equation has got 20 terms okay the test set has got only 10 terms now should we be transforming this by applying all these you know all this code or not yeah test set also we need to do yeah that. so this is in raw form right this is this is still in the raw form so you need to bring that and apply all these transformations and then only you will be able to predict okay the second point is maybe your question is why fit transform on train set and only transform on test set right yeah right because if you see here if you see here this uh, qualified imputation value we found on the train set right 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 this is fit this is transform we are actually replacing the values wherever we find null we are replacing those values with the the appropriate you know that uh, qualified understand this is fit this is transform okay so on test set should be fit on test set should be fit should we find yeah. qualified imputation values using test set again no, no we don't need to no because if you do it right the test set size is very small the understanding is going to be not going to be right that is one thing the other thing is when you actually formed an equation you used some values to 
form that equation the values will change the equation will behave differently you are not using original model so only transform the operation only transform the same concept there also throughout the AI, the same concept will actually follow any questions here that's a very good question basically you are thinking that's where you are asking questions so any any other questions on this so uh, i have a question on the bias term yeah so bias time is something like uh, a serial number kind of stuff or only one always you use one bias term so, will have one only one just one very number constant one, one uh, constant it is Every because you see, I, I already explained right theta zero into x x zero is there the x zero is one that's where we are putting theta zero only if you take another number right that will become a variable again right another initial, initial term will come got it yeah but previously we were not you know adding the bias term even though no even it is there it was there i did not highlight it whenever i show an equation with theta zero the bias term is there i was not highlighting it because i am trying to induce one one after the other so it was there in the wireless algorithm also yeah it is there everywhere it is going to be there even in deep learning will have it especially the concepts I am explaining right now, I am keeping deep learning in mind and explaining. These are all fundamentals for deep learning. You know, in your machine learning course, 50% of the course is fundamentals for deep learning. Rest of the 50% is the machine learning algorithms. I don't care much about those algorithms, but industry interviews are maybe in some use cases, they are useful, so I am explaining. Maybe in future, right, maybe in a, in a year, six months or a year, I am going to eliminate all those algorithms and give recordings. Now watch them in the in there and we'll add more there are there is a lot to cover but because of the time constraint we are not able to cover it okay so any other question sorry okay so that is good and here right at this point this uh, um, what you call it as a transform thing, right? So you need to remember that, you know, train set, we do fit transform. On the test set, we do only transform. Manually, I showed you that only transform is this thing. Fit transform is this thing. Fit is finding out what we need to do. Transform is transforming the data, right? Here we found it, we transform. On the test set, we'll actually transform. No fitting, okay? So here uh, on the polynomial, right, you understood, right? So we, when we added a new term in the data set, uh, it actually you know, created that uh, curvy line and it is actually predicting well and the errors are less. Okay, so I actually did one more thing here, uh, the same thing, whatever I showed you in the top, right? I tried to show the difference. If you fit a straight line, the data, the line is going to be like that. The predictions are going to be like that. It's a curvy line, the predictions are going to be like that. This is an underfitted model. This is the best fit line. If you try to make it even complex, right? It's going to go here and there and the model will actually, model may not work that. Okay. So I basically follow two things. One is and to ng and the second is this guy. Ali and Jaram, right? This guy has got a book uh, on uh, mastering machine learning, right? hands-on machine learning, right? You know, this book is going to be at a high level, right? If you know all the fundamentals and all that, right, you'll understand. But at one point in time, uh, maybe we will cover everything. We'll cover everything from this book and uh, the Andrew Engie's uh, course. But these are the basis for our course and our my experience also that is that is the most important thing and we try to take concepts from everywhere and created the examples there that's the that's the advantage of coming to me and learning by the end of the course you should be ready to build models and you know 
industry ready you should become industry ready that's the goal only only thing i expect from you is that practice practice i gave every example for everything this is just you know i am showing you like you know 14th example right there are 40 apart from these right i have more more code examples i think i think 40 slides there see 46 uh, code examples there and we have more you know every batch i'll add you now maybe 5 6 more code examples and concepts also so so we have everything just follow the course practice practice take the data set and practice the only that is the only only request i have to you okay so that's it for today tomorrow we'll see how the polynomial regression works on uh, the what to call it as our data set employee salary data set any other questions Uh, so the the slides of yesterday and to, uh, they, uh, they are not in the notes directory. Can you please uh, place them? Yesterday, notes? yesterday no slides, sir. Today I will upload. I actually forgot to show you this. At okay. uh, the beginning of the class itself, I you know on Monday itself I would have shown you shown you this thing, but that's okay. So I will upload sure. this. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. So. thank you and uh, let us meet uh, tomorrow thank you sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.